Using the Nyquist diagram, we define a way to analyze the stability of a closed-loop system, but we did not define a way to quantify how stable the system is. This is the topic of this lecture. Here we are going to study gain and phase margin. Systems with greater gain and phase margins can withstand greater changes in system parameters before becoming unstable. In a sense, gain and phase margins can be related to the root locus, in that systems whose poles are farther from the imaginary axis have a greater degree of stability. The gain margin is the change in open loop gain expressed in decibels required to achieve a 180 degree of phase shift that makes the system closed loop unstable. The phase margin is the changing open loop phase shift required at a unit gain to make the closed loop system unstable. In other words, we are looking for the negative one on the Nyquist plot, but this time using the Bode plot. By the end of this lecture, we should be able to calculate the gain and phase margin of a system, obtain the gain and phase margin of a Bode plot and of a Nyquist plot, and quantify the stability of an open loop transfer function when used in a closed loop system. The stability margins are very powerful to quantify stability of a given system. The main advantage is that the transfer function doesn't need to be known. We can obtain the transfer function from the frequency response of a system. By looking at the frequency response of an open loop system, we can then infer the stability of the closed loop system based on the open loop response that is again determined experimentally. Here is another application. The controller gain k has been specified for the process shown. If the parameter b here changes during operation, how can we ensure that a system remains stable? This can be observed in the body plot using the phase and gain margins. In order to define the stability margins, let's once again look at the similarities between the body and the Nyquist plot. For this closed loop system, controller k and the process g of s, we know that the transfer function can be simply written as k times g divided by 1 plus k times g. This system might only be stable for a range of values of k. If the denominator of this transfer function becomes zero, then the system becomes unstable. The output of the system goes to infinity. This is observed when 1 plus k times g of s is equal to zero, which means that a k times g of s is equal to negative one. And this is the famous point on the Nyquist plot that we need to avoid. Where is that point on the Bode plot? We can think about this point in polar coordinates. This would be the same as placing the magnitude of k times g of s at one and the giving a phase of g of s of negative 180 degrees. It would give us this vector, this magnitude is 1, and the angle here is negative 180 degrees. And this is the point to avoid on the Bode plot. On the Nyquist plot, this combination of k times g can never be negative 1, or you are going to encircle negative 1 and make the closed loop system unstable. On the Bode plot, that translates to a magnitude of 1, or 0 decibels, on the body plot and a phase of negative 180 degrees. If this specific combination can be reached, then the system may become closed loop unstable. Now let's take a closer look at this by looking at this transfer function. This is a third order transfer function that is to be used in the unit feedback loop. This function has a pole at the origin, hence this contour on the Nyquist plot that attends to infinity. We can clearly see here that as we increase this gain k, this specific point on the Nyquist plot now moves to the left and eventually may be placed at the left of negative 1. This means that the Nyquist plot will encircle negative 1 and this system may become closed loop unstable. The same point on the Bode plot is expressed in polar form as a magnitude of 1 with a phase of negative 180 degrees. So where is it on the Bode plot? Let's look at it. Here we have the same transfer function. We want to avoid negative 1 or a magnitude of 1 and a phase of negative 180 degrees. Remember that in the Bode plot we are using a log scale, so this is 0 decibels and negative 180 degrees. Where are these two combinations? Based on this definition, we can define the gain and phase margin as the gain or the phase that it needs to be added to the system to reach that critical point. Let's first look at the phase margin. For the phase margin, we will start at the point where the magnitude on the body plot is 0 decibels, and here it is, and then look at the current phase. Once we know the current phase, the phase margin is defined as how far we are from negative 180 degrees when the magnitude of the transfer function is 0 decibels, which is exactly this distance right here. This is the phase margin or the amount of phase shift that it needs to be added to the system 
so that the phase becomes negative 180 degrees when the magnitude on the body plot is 0 decibels. From now on, we will refer to this specific frequency where the magnitude of the body plot is 0 as the crossover frequency omega c. We can now look at the gain margin, and to look at the gain margin, we will do the same, but it's starting from the phase. Starting at the point where the phase is negative 180 degrees, here it is. We can now look at the magnitude of the transfer function, and we land here. The gain margin is defined as the increase in the loop gain when the phase is negative 180 degrees that it would result in a magnitude of 0 decibels or 1. So the gain margin is right here. If we add this amount of decibels to the system, the system will reach the critical point and become closed loop unstable. So let's summarize our discussion. First, we can define what we call the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency is defined as the frequency where the magnitude is 0 decibels. Let's call that omega c. To find the phase margin, look at 0 decibels, find the crossover frequency, and now look at the difference between the current phase and the negative 180 degrees. This distance is the so-called phase margin. For the gain margin, you start at negative 180 degrees, look at the current gain of the transfer function, and the difference to 0 is the gain margin, or how many decibels need to be added to the transfer function to reach that a critical combination of negative 180 degrees and 0 decibels. Here is how the gain and phase margin works. Let's start with our reference body plot, which are these two solid lines here for phase and magnitude. If the gain of the transfer function is increased, then you know that the body plot will shift upwards, and if the gain is decreased, then the entire body plot shifts downwards. Notice that by changing the gain, the phase of the transfer function does not change. Only the gain is affected. Only the magnitude is affected. Notice also that by changing the gain, the crossover frequency shifts. The initial crossover frequency is here, but by increasing the gain, now the body plot goes upwards and the new crossover frequency is located there. For this particular case, if the gain is decreased, then the crossover frequency will also decrease. Now let's look at the phase. What changes the phase of the transfer function? Most of the time, a additional phase shift will occur from delays in the control system. The delay will make the phase shift up or down. If the delay increases, the phase shift increases. However, the magnitude of the transfer function does not change. We can see in the first example here that the system appears to be closed loop stable. However, if we increase the phase shift to a point where this point, specifically at the crossover frequency, moves to negative 180 degrees, which means that the entire phase plot goes downwards, then we are indeed at that critical point where the phase is negative 180 degrees and the gain is 0 decibels, making the system closed loop unstable. The biggest advantage of this analysis is to quantify how stable a system is. Let's look at this example. True or false, the following open loop transfer function is closed loop stable for any value of k greater than 0. Is this true or false? Well, looking at the Nyquist plot, we can clearly see that the Nyquist plot will never encircle negative 1. We can further state that this system is closed loop stable, therefore p equals to 0. n is also equals to 0, meaning that z is equal to 0 for all values of k greater than 0. Indeed, the system is closed loop stable. However, notice that if a small phase shift is added to this Nyquist plot, then this point of the Nyquist plot may get very close to negative 1, and the system is at the verge of instability. Even though the system is always closed loop stable, a small change in the system behavior can lead to instability. Now let's look at the same example, but are now using the Bode plot. Is the following open loop transfer function closed loop stable for any value of k greater than zero? Let's look at the phase and the gain margins. Starting at the phase margin, we can start at zero decibels, Look at the current phase and see how far we are from negative 180 degrees. So this is a good margin of instability and the system appears to be closed loop stable. Now let's look at the gain margin. For the gain margin, we see that this system never touches negative 180 degrees. This is the closest point we get. And if we go up, then we are not quite at zero decibels. There is still a small margin there. Notice, however, that a small change in the gain of this transfer function can make this body plot shift upwards and lead to a point that is very close to instability. On the root locus, this would be seen as the poles moving very close to the imaginary axis. Even though the system is not theoretically is unstable, it is very close to becoming unstable. And this type of analysis is critical in systems where some of the parameters are subjected to changes during operation.
Now that we have all the definitions for phase and gain margins, let's see how we can calculate them. Let's start with the phase margin. As an example for phase and gain margin, consider the open loop second order transfer function given here. Omega n squared divided by s times s plus 2 zeta omega n. You can see that if this is a open loop transfer function, when you close the loop in a unit feedback loop, we go back to the standard form of a second order transfer function. The first step to find the phase margin is to calculate the crossover frequency, or the frequency at which the magnitude of the transfer function is 1 or 0 decibels on the body plot. At the crossover frequency, we are going to name this frequency omega c. The magnitude of the transfer function is 1. Thus, we can simply take the magnitude of the transfer function and equate that to 1. The magnitude of j omega is simply omega, and the magnitude of this pole is simply the real part squared, which is here, plus the imaginary part squared, which is omega c squared. And the square root of that gives the magnitude of that pole. We can now equate this to 1. Or we could actually do 20 log of all this and equate this to 0 dB, and this would be equivalent. It is now sufficient to solve for this simple equation to find the crossover frequency omega c. Once omega c is found, we can move on to step 2. The objective now is to find the phase of the transfer function at the crossover frequency. For this particular transfer function, we know that the phase of this transfer function is negative 90 degrees because of the pole of the origin, minus the inverse tangent of the real part of this pole to zeta. The imaginary part of this pole, which is omega, divided by the real part to zeta omega n. Of course, this will change depending on the transfer function. Now, having the expression for the phase will allow us to determine the phase at the crossover frequency. Simply replace omega with the crossover frequency, which is omega c, and solve for phi. This expression now gives the phase of the transfer function at the crossover frequency. We can now easily calculate the margin as the distance from the current phase to 180 degrees. And the phase margin is simply given as 180 minus the magnitude of the phase at the crossover frequency. If this value is positive, this means that a phase needs to be added to the system for the system to become unstable, meaning that a positive phase represents a stable closed loop system and a negative phase margin represents a unstable closed loop system. Now let's move on to the calculation of the gain margin for the same transfer function that we saw before. If you're looking at the gain margin, the first step is to find the frequency where the phase of the transfer function is negative 180 degrees. To do this, we need to identify the real and imaginary parts of the transfer function. We know that when the phase is negative 180 degrees, the imaginary part of the transfer function is zero. If you have the imaginary and the real axis here, and the magnitude of the transfer function is given at this point, we see that this is a phase of negative 180 degrees. So the imaginary part is zero. And this is what we're going to use to determine the frequency that leads to a phase of negative 180 degrees. So back to our transfer function, we need to identify its real and imaginary components. Starting here, we can multiply out the denominator. Remember that a j is defined as the square root of negative 1, so j squared is negative 1. After this simple manipulation, we can now identify the real part and the imaginary part of the denominator. To eliminate the complex part from the denominator, simply multiply the transfer function by the conjugate of the denominator. The real part is given by omega n squared times negative omega f squared divided by the square of this term minus the square of this term. Now we see that when we take j times 2 zeta omega n omega f is squared, this j becomes negative 1 and the complex part disappears from the denominator. The imaginary part is omega n squared times this term. And here we have both the real and imaginary parts. Here is the real part, here is the imaginary part. And as we discussed, when the phase of the transfer function is negative 180 degrees, the imaginary part of the transfer function is zero. It is now sufficient to take this imaginary part and equate this to zero and solve for omega f. There are several possibilities here. Omega f may be equal to zero. This is not a valid frequency and this value needs to be ignored. Omega f may tend to infinity. What does it mean? It means that the phase approaches negative 180 degrees asymptotically and will never actually cross negative 180 degrees. And the third case, omega f is a positive constant. In this case, we can proceed to step two. In step two, 
we are now going to evaluate the magnitude of the transfer function at the frequency we found in the previous step. The magnitude of the transfer function is given here, as we calculated before, but notice that this has been evaluated at omega f. This magnitude now gives the magnitude of the transfer function when the phase is negative 180 degrees. If this is the magnitude of the transfer function, we, we can now take negative 20 log of that gain, and this will give now the gain margin. If the gain margin turns out to be positive, the system is closed loop stable. This means that the gain can be multiplied by kmg, which is what we found here, before the system becomes marginally stable. Or we can add mg decibels to the Bode plot before instability. If the gain margin turns out to be zero, then the system is marginally stable. On the Nyquist plot, we are touching negative one. And on the rote locus, the poles are now lying on the imaginary axis. And if the gain margin turns out to be negative, the system is closed loop unstable. We can say that we can divide the magnitude of the transfer function by kmg in order to make the system marginally stable. Or we'll need to subtract mg decibels to achieve stability. And this is it for the theory part. This is a very short lecture. All these concepts will become a lot more clear with exercises. There are five exercises here. I recommend you attempt all of them. It is also very important to be able to relate the phase and gain margins obtained in a Bode plot to that observed in the Nyquist plot. We'll cover some of these examples in lecture 22. Thank you.